Hello, good morning and welcome to St Catherine by the Sea, Holworth, for morning prayer on Saturday. It's the 18th of August and if you're following in the Red Book, Daily Prayer Church of England, you'll need to find towards the beginning after prayer during the day, morning and evening prayer in the seasons and ordinary time. And we're looking for morning prayer on Saturday. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's praise. Shall I read this through? Uh -uh. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My, my flesh. flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and to meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now Amen. and forever. Amen. So the appointed psalmody this morning, there are three, yeah. and they are numbers 96, 97 and 100. 96, 97 and 100, and as usual... We may use the prayer that follows in silence if we have it. Right. Amen. Oh, worship, worship the Lord, Lord in the beauty, beauty of holiness. holiness. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. For all the gods of the nations are but idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Honour and majesty are before him. Power and splendour are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honour and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved and will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the fields be joyful in all that is in them. Let all the trees of the woods shout for joy before the Lord. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. With righteousness he will judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father Lord, and, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, it as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. O worship the Lord, Lord in the beauty of holiness.
Psalm 97. You, Lord, are most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings lit up the world. The earth saw it and trembled. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declared his righteousness, and all the peoples have seen his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in mere idols. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgment, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of the faithful and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joy for the true of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You, Lord, are most high over all the earth. Psalm 100. The Lord, Lord is gracious, his, his steadfast love is everlasting. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, Amen. and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it as was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is gracious, his, his steadfast, steadfast love, love is everlasting. everlasting. So we turn to the canticle back in morning prayer on Saturday, a song of Jerusalem, our mother. Thus says so our God, Lord, I will I comfort, comfort you. you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, says the Lord. Rejoice with her in <coughs> joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her consoling breast. For thus says our God, you shall be turned and carried on her arm. As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. As, As it was, it was in, in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Thus says our God, I will comfort you. You, you shall see, see, and your heart shall rejoice. So we turn to our blue Bibles, as we have them here, or whatever colour they are, if we're listening, for Second Samuel chapter 9. Second book of Samuel chapter 9. It's not as long as it sounds like it might be. Mm 
Yeah. So second Samuel yeah. nine. Yes, thank you. David asked, "Is there still anyone left in the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake?" Now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba, and he was summoned to David. The king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. The king said, Is there anyone representing the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? Ziba said to the king, There remains a son of Jonathan. Of Jonathan. He is crippled in his feet. The king said to him, Where is he? Ziba said to the king, he is in the house of Machia, son of Amiel, at Lodiba. Then King David sent and brought him from the house of Machia, son of Amiel, at Lodiba. Mephisabosheth, son of Mehitbosh is note son of John, note son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, and fell on his face and did obedience. David said to me, me this is difficult. Me Mephibosheth. All oh, right, Mephibosheth. What Mephibosheth? Him. Him. <laughs> he answered. Am I your servant? So I am your servant. David said to him, Do not be afraid, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you yourself shall eat at my table always. He did obeisance and said, What is, what is your servant that you should look upon a dead dog such as I am? Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said to him, All that belong to Saul and to this house I have given to your master's grand grandson. You and your sons and your servants shall remain in the land for him. <coughs> you shall bring in the produce so that your master's grandson may have food to eat. But your master's grandson Mephibosheth shall always eat at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king had commands his servant, so your servant will do. I should just say he from now he, on. He's got it four yes, times in the next He time. at David's table, like one of the king's sons. He had a young son whose name was Mika, and all who lived in Ziba's house became his servants. He lived in Jerusalem, for he always ate at the king's table. Now he was lame in both his feet. Excellent, thank you. <coughs> this is one of those names like Melchizedek, which is a child I picked up on and just loved, so... <laughs> but yeah, yes, that, that one just defeated me on the <coughs> No, understandably. Yeah. Understandably. So this is basically just sort of following up after um, Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle. David has now taken charge. He's built his own house. He's in Jerusalem. Uh, he's been told by the prophet not to build a temple to God yet, but his son Solomon will do that. Mm -hmm. But God will make a house for him, a dynasty, which set, paves the way for the Messiah. Because um, the, some of the language was sort of for there and then, but some of it suggests that he'll just go on forever. Yes. And the question is whether that's just the way they used to praise kings in those days. You know, you're such a good king that your dynasty will go on forever. Or whether it actually meant it. Yes, absolutely. King is dead long as the king. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> um, and so now that we've just had that, and what we've now got is him to some extent putting his house in order and normally 
if you were a king. I mean, this is all part, I think, of showing how good a king David is. Yeah. Was. But normally you go around killing people. Yeah, get rid of them. If they would like to pop up and have a claim to the throne. Yes. But David is so good that although he won't kill the person who's terrorising him and the nation, um, when Saul was alive, yeah. um, he's not even... You know, he's carrying on in that tradition and looking for people he can help. Yes. And the only surviving, or the surviving one we're told about here, is this chap um, who is actually disabled. Yes. Or has a disability. So, yeah. so it, it, it's even sort of even more, you know, he's being so gracious because this person would have been counted effectively worthless yeah. in that culture because they weren't productive. Mm. Um, they'd have had to beg, although there are still servants about the place associated with him. But he puts him in charge of the servants, whereas the servants would, I guess, have felt they were looking after him, kind of. Yes. Um, so it's it's a very sort of Christian almost story. Mm, it is um, from mm. the Hebrew scripture. Yes, because you can see what is your servant that you should look upon a dead dog such as I am. Yeah. That's his description of himself. Yes. <coughs> Unexpected. This. Uh, our next reading, Acts eight four to twenty five. Hopefully, it should be more straightforward. Yeah. Acts 8, 4 to 25. Now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria, Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds, with one accord, listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, <coughs> hearing and seeing the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed, and many others who were paralysed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in the city. Now a certain man named Simeon, had pre previously practiced magic in the city and had amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he was someone great. All of them, from the least to the greatest, listened to him eagerly, saying, This man is the power of God that is called great. And they listened eagerly to him, because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, who was proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptised, both men and women. Even Simeon himself believed. After being baptised, he stayed constantly with Philip and was amazed when he saw the signs and the great miracles that took place. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon them, upon any of them. They had only been baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simeon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the Apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's gift with money. You had no part or share on in this, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and the claims of wickedness. Simeon answered, Pray for me to the, pray me, pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. Now after Peter and John had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news to many villages of the, Samaria, of the Samaritans. Thank you. Just 
So we've had the persecution begin. We've just finished with the great long defence of Stephen. He's just been stoned. Saul is going round house to house pulling the Christians out yeah. and uh, imprisoning them. And uh, so this is sort of the next thing that happens as people scattering through the persecution. Um, Philip ends up, as we see in Samaria, reminded that uh, Jesus had at least one um, conversation with somebody in Samaria who went and told um, her townspeople that uh, she had met the Messiah. Um, that was the woman at the well, mm -hmm. of course. <coughs> I forget the Greek Orthodox's name for her, but it's like woman of light or something. Yeah, so yes. she's one of those women who we know about, but we forget about when we think about sort of the male-dominated stories. So we know that there is good news in Samaria, but we also know that the disciples didn't like it and called down fire when Jesus wasn't welcome in another town. Yeah. Uh, and for the Jews at the time around Jerusalem, they didn't think the Samaritans were up to much because they had different, uh, they were like a different denomination, I guess, yeah. of Judaism. Um, but Philip ends up there. It's interesting how Philip doesn't pop up too much in the Gospels, but in Acts, um, he's the first one he's that we hear there, yeah. speaking in Samaria. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also the one that speaks to the eunuch in the, the carriage. In the, yes. Uh, um, so, yes, he, he is beginning to make a more notable appearance now but it's interesting that uh, Peter and John were sent by the apostles of Jerusalem as if Philip wasn't properly up to the job <laughs> <laughs> sure he's getting it right so there are sort of um, signs and wonders such that this magician has decided to follow he has been baptized yes. um, but then he wants to receive this Holy Spirit that apparently Peter and John can give but Philip can't um, it didn't come to them in their baptism in this story it comes separately with the laying on of hands of Peter and John. Yes. Um, which I guess could play into the hands of those who say that as Peter was the first Pope, you can only get the spirit if you have hands laid on you that have had hands laid on you that have had... As it were. Yeah, there has to be a first one. So, yeah. um, yeah. But I, it's extraordinary how um, cross they are with him for asking for the spirit and offering money. Because yeah, the response is good though, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> you pray for me. <laughs> None yeah. of this will get out. Um, but I guess it's just his world, isn't it? He's yeah. done tricks, as what they call it, magic. That's you know, he has done things for people for money. Yeah. So it's not like he's actually being out of order. But their point is, I guess, that this is a free gift, yes. and they're offended. I suppose it's like us if we take somebody out for a meal and then they insist on paying. Yeah, that wasn't quite what we meant. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> But uh, they are quite harsh. But as you say, his response is excellent. Yeah. Uh, and then Peter and John return to Jerusalem, probably just as well, they're out of the way. Uh, but they proclaim the good news to many villages on their way. But uh, they, they leave Philip to... Uh, one wonders whether he um, is able to... or the Holy Spirit is imparted through him after that, or whether people still have to send for Peter and John. Yeah. Yes, it doesn't say. No. Yeah. no. But it's one of the interesting things for sort of theology today that comes from this. I mean, there are all sorts, but the one is that um, it was my experience that I received a fuller experience of the Holy Spirit aside from my baptism. Yes. Um, but, uh, some would say it was already there latent, but it was just brought to the fore later or something. I don't know. But uh, it's interesting because elsewhere the things happen together with Jesus. The Spirit was there at baptism because we're told the dove comes out of heaven. Yes. Um, but here it seems that baptism is a separate thing. And there are one or two other stories in, the, in Acts where that seems to be the case too. So should we head back to morning prayer for the response? Yeah. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. The Song of Zechariah. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, 
born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Let us pray. Lord of the Sabbath, Prince of Peace, Comforter and Advocate, three in one. We thank you that you are our peace and our rest and that we can come to you for that liberty that refreshment and that restoration and we can even come to you for that today we thank you that this is a day of rest for us and for many it may be the end or the beginning of a period of rest, so we pray for those who will be travelling. We also remember those who may not rest, that those who may be travelling can travel and have food and whatnot at the motorway services, <laughs> have cover from emergency services, that their communications will work. And so we pray that those who rest will be restored in their rest, in themselves and in their relationships. And those that are working today may have their rest in their turn. With Operation World, some prayers for Macedonia. <clears throat> As this is written by Evangelical Organisation, the prayers are about the Evangelicals in Macedonia. I suspect we may have other prayers on other days for them, for other parts of the church. But the label of cult persists, and so we pray that the organisations that would call themselves Evangelical Christian will have favour from the government and a humble attitude from the church. That there will be unity across the denominations in that place. That people press into true unity as they write, and that Christians will love one another no, sorry, that the love of Christians, there's an apostrophe missing, that Christians' love for one another might attract many to Christ. We ask that you will bless all Christians as they seek to plant churches, to evangelise and become involved in mission. We pray that Macedonian believers will increase in number and understanding. We thank you for organisations like SEND, YWAM and SGA, as they work to increase the understanding and experience of Christians there through training and discipleship. We pray a special blessing on the Albanians, the Romanis and the Turkish communities as ethnic minorities. 
there will be opportunities in particular tailored for them that are creative, culturally relevant and compelling that they may be enabled by your spirit to respond should they so choose. Christian Action Search and Education invites us to pray for the criminal justice system today, inmates, staff and governors in prisons with increasing problems of overcrowding, drug abuse, violence and poor mental health. Sometimes leading to suicide, we pray for more resources to be available and apportioned wisely so that offenders can be kept safe from one another and from themselves and successfully rehabilitated. I pray that word rehabilitation is to the fore in all planning and resourcing. From Green Christian, the government has announced the biggest road building programme for over 20 years. It intends to spend £15 billion on 100 major road schemes in the next few years, including a network of expressways without access for bikes or buses and lots of bridges and flyovers. However, transport already accounts for nearly 50% of greenhouse gas emissions and much of our air pollution. As long as the vast majority of deep vehicles are powered by petrol or diesel, Air pollution will remain a big problem. New roads will do nothing to ameliorate air quality or enable us to fulfil our legal obligations on climate change. What they've written there seems to make sense and we pray that uh, organisations and uh, people with different views within government will... Um, it says it has been announced, I don't know if that means it is going to happen or whether this is just a plan, but we pray for uh, good sense to prevail uh, and that media, opposition, uh, interest groups will all play their part in directing us towards uh, more a future that isn't necessarily sustainable because we have perhaps lost too much to be thinking about sustaining, but is restorative yes. even in its approach to communications and transport and certainly um, the use of the few fossil fuels we have left. It does seem crazy. Indeed. And so we pray close to home for our church membership. We thank you for Cyril and Cynthia, Carol and Jack, Lisa and Jack, Dulcie, Beth and Alex, Celia and Jeff, John, Keith and Anne, Chris, Kathleen, Elizabeth and Michael, Leslie and Kevin, Peter and Liz, Noel and Alison, Graham and Suzanne, Tessa, Laura, Pat, Richard, Liz and Tony, as half of those on the membership in Ermoyne. We pray your blessings of health, wealth, prosperity, salvation, healing and deliverance on them. For those that are struggling, that they will know your presence, that they will call on you, that they will know your answer to their prayers directly and through those around and about them that believe in you and others that don't. We pray they will have the support they need and be prepared to receive it when it's offered. We pray for those for whom things are going well, that they may be, may be moved to be part of that answer. And we pray that for ourselves, alongside these for whom you have prayed, that our faith in you, your presence in us, will be seen to be our motivation, our inspiration. Your character, your love, your power will be seen in us as we read of uh, Simon the magician being drawn to Philip. May people be drawn to them and to us as we centre our lives on you. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shams <laughs>
Grant, Lord, that we who are baptised into the death of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, may continually put to death our evil desires and be buried with him, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection through his merits, who died and was buried and rose again for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.